Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel, Whole Bright Life. I am Lady V, and I just come to share a real personal testimonial word with you tonight, and I hope that it reaches you, that it speaks to you, that it resonates with you, uh, and that it encourages you to keep going and keep fighting the good fight of faith. Um... I was standing in the kitchen making me a little salad and I was thinking about what to share today and all day long the Lord's been showing me the same thing and so he dropped one of my childhood testimonies in my spirit and I was like yes and it just all started coming to me scriptures and everything so I pray that this blesses you I, I believe it will um wherever you may be right this second or this time in your life. Um, you know, there's a famous saying that um, the battle, well, it's not a famous saying, it's a scripture, um, but I think it's heavily used um, frequently, is the battle is not yours, it is the Lord's, Right? Even if you're not saved, I'm sure you've heard that. Somebody's grandma say, <laughs> the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. But I want to share something with you guys that the Lord just gave me. Um, lots of scripture. Jehoshaphat is facing war. He is the king of Judah and Jerusalem. Uh, this is going to be 2 Chronicles 20. Uh, so Jehoshaphat, I'm going to paraphrase and then I'm going to read some scripture and uh, go into my little testimonies. Um, but Jehoshaphat is fighting. Jehoshaphat is not a fighter. That's what I want you to know. Jehoshaphat... He's a good king. He just does not want to fight. And so the Moabites, the Ammonites, and Minyanites came to start a war with Jehoshaphat. Okay? So people were coming to tell him, hey, you know, get ready because a large army is coming against you, you know, uh, from Edom. And they're ready. They're going to attack you. And Jehoshaphat was scared. You know, he was afraid. He didn't want to fight. And so uh, he announced that everyone was going to go on a fast. You know, we're going to seek the Lord. And so the people of Judah came together to ask the Lord for help. I want you to put a pen in that right there. The people of Judah came together to ask the Lord for help. And when they came together in the temple of the Lord, it says, um, verse 5, Then Jehoshaphat stood up and he said, Lord God of our ancestors, you are the God in heaven. You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. You have power and strength, so no one can stand against you. Our God, you forced out the people who lived in this land as your people Israel moved in, and you gave this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham. He's reminding God of his word. He's reminding God of his ways. They lived in this land and built a temple for you. They said, if trouble comes upon us, a war, a punishment, sickness, or hunger, we will stand before you and before this temple where you have chosen to be worshipped. We will cry out to you when we are in trouble. Then you will hear and save us. But now, here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Edom. Listen to this part very carefully. You wouldn't let the Israelites enter their lands 
when the Israelites came from Egypt. So the Israelites turned away and did not destroy them because when they entered the land, they went in there to fight and possess it, to overtake it. And everything had to go from the youngest to the oldest. They wiped, utterly wiped them out. The Amalekites, the Hittites, Jebusites, Ammonites, all wiped out. The Canaanites, God won't play no games, okay? <laughs> if you mess with his people. And God led them to show this same group of people mercy and not destroy them. My God. Whew. So the Israelites turned away and did not destroy them. Listen to this very carefully. But see how they repay us for not destroying them. They have come to force us out of your land, which you gave us as our own. Our God, punish those people. We have no power against this large army that is attacking us, and we don't know what to do. So we look to you for help. There it is again. Jehoshaphat is asking for help. Hallelujah. So as they were praying, I'm paraphrasing here, um, among them stood a prophet named Jehazel. And Jehazel stands up. It says the spirit of the Lord entered him. And he began to speak the oracles of God. And he said, don't be afraid. The Lord is saying, do not be discouraged. Do not be afraid because of this large army. For the battle is not yours. There it is. It is God. Okay, so we're dealing with the king of Judah and, uh, Judah, and he is not wanting to fight. He, he's not a brawler, and so he wants to remain peaceful. He just wants to remain at peace. Um, but these people are coming to attack him. And so, this is what I got out of that. I have to go ahead and share that now because I was going to wait. But this is what the Lord is saying. If this word is resonating with you on tonight as much as it's resonating with me. Because <laughs> this blessed me, y'all. Just now. This is blessing me. Uh, I know you've heard it so much that the battle is not yours, it is the Lord's. But this is not pertaining to every battle. Because some battles are started by people, right? So this battle, he says, is not yours if you are being repaid evil for doing good. My God, my God, my God. Listen, it is never your battle when you are being repaid evil for doing good. This is why the enemy fights us and even our flesh is contrary to the spirit. Fights us so hard to do people like they do us. Because you do not have the Lord's help on your behalf because your flesh is fighting. You, you out there fighting. You out there sticking and moving. You out there arguing and going back and forth So you're not living your best life. 
You need not fight in this battle if contingent upon you didn't start it. You didn't start it so the Lord will finish it. My God, my God, my God. I just feel like saying that one more time. It is never your battle when you are being repaid evil for doing good. Then there's another scripture that he dropped into my spirit when he gave me that. Excuse me. Proverbs 17, 13. Oh my God. This was good to me, y'all. I'm telling you. Right about now, <laughs> this is good to me. If you repay good with evil, evil will never leave your house. Now I'm going to tell you, David was a man after God's own heart, right? Um, he worshiped God with his whole heart. He did everything passionately, wholeheartedly for God. He ruled the people well, you know. He was humble. And he was, the, he was a shepherd who God chose to raise up from tending to sheep to tending to his people. David was an upright man. Okay? But God is his word. And when he delivered the word to David through the prophet, he said that the sword would never depart from his house because David had repaid evil for good. I know a lot of us would like to think it's because he, you know, took Bathsheba as his own, but it was a little bit deeper than that. Look at the, the prophecy against him. You took a man's sheep, the only sheep he had, the man. When Nathan addressed David, he said, there's a man who took a man's only sheep. That's all he had. He took it. What should happen to that man? And David said, that man should pay. He should, you know... That man should, should die. Nathan said, you are that man. Because Uriah was his servant who was honoring him by fighting in the war and would not even leave David to go be with his wife. He was that committed to his king. And that was a dishonor for the king to dishonor a man who was honoring him. And so it was a little bit deeper than just adultery. It was repaying evil for good. And if you do that, then evil will never leave your house and this is why it's so important let them have it let, let them have the last say in the natural let them have what they think is the upper hand let them have that let them have it because if you repay evil because you even got to look at yourself you got to say hey help me do good 
Help me not do railing for railing. Help me to treat people the way I would want to be treated. And this is why we call on the Lord for help, because we can't do it by ourselves. We need the Lord's help. And so, another scripture God gave me, and I'm going to tell you how you, you really, really should fight. The other day I was sitting on my bed, and I just sat up, and I usually just, you know, go into prayer. But this time, I was led by the Holy Spirit to just sit in prayer. Just, not in prayer, but just sit in the presence of God. Tears began to roll. I was thinking about the battle that I was facing. And all of a sudden, the Lord dropped my grandmother, which is not my maternal or paternal grandmother biologically, but um, my dad, was adopted by her um, and my adoptive grandfather when he was young. So she was a pastor and she just really, really, truly loved God and his people. And his people. And I would go stay with her sometimes because my mom and them, they didn't really go to church like that. But when I stayed with her, I would go to church. And it was it was to drop some godly deposits. I know, I know now, I know for sure. It was to drop some godly deposits into me and to set an example before me so that I would remember. This woman, and back then, I was, she was in her 70s then. <laughs> um she would get on her knees every night and pray. I mean, praying for the church, praying for her family. I know she's praying for me. Thank God Almighty. Praying for... I know her enemies. And I never saw this woman stay mad at anybody. She would go take care of her sister in the rest home. And she would come back and tell me how her sister just slammed, cursed her out, told her everything, you know, called her every name in the book except for a child of God. And she would go right back. And she would tell that story with a smile, with a gold tooth right there. You know what, Twina? That's what she used to call me. She, 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 she laid me out again. And I'm still going to love her. She'll go right back, feed her again, take care of her until she died. She took care of her sister. Took care of her grandchildren, y'all. Was still driving at 98 years old. And they say she got into an accident and got out of the car after the accident and asked the other lady in the other car, is you okay, baby? Everything all right with you? <laughs> 98 years old. The Lord preserved her. I saw the Lord watch out for her, keep her, sustain her, and honored her. The Lord honored her. The Bible says, Humility goes before honor. Proverbs 18, 12. And this lady was the epitome, this woman, of humility. I'm telling you. I mean, it had everything to do with her heart posture, how she treated people. I remember her grandson's funeral. I came over and hugged her neck and I couldn't fathom what she had been through in 90 something years of life. She had lost friends, she had lost children, 
Now she was bearing her grandchild, whom she took care of. He was in his 70s. I was just like, this is... Wow. And I remember at that funeral, a lady stopped me outside the church and she saw me and grandma together and she said, baby, that's your grandma? Mm, I would be at her feet wanting to know what she has done. And, and good God almighty, it was right before me. But I hugged her neck. I'm getting ahead of myself. I hugged her neck and she said, baby, let me tell you something. She said, always treat people right. My God, my God, my God, my God. You got to see the honor that God, not people, but the honor that God bestows upon you when you refuse to get back, when you refuse to attack people, when you refuse to make unnecessary war, because that's not how we fight our battles, not in the kingdom of God. The Lord raises up those that are bowed down. Psalms 145, 14. And humility comes before honor. Humility comes from the Latin word humilis. Humilis. Which means low. In that passage that I just read, Jehoshaphat, uh, 2 Chronicles 20, 18, says Je Jehoshaphat bowed low his face to the ground after he heard the prophecy from Jehazel that you, you know, this is not your battle, this is the Lord's. First he had come to God telling him who he was, reminding him of his word, asking him for his help. And then when the Lord says, I'm going to fight for you, he bowed down and received that word in humility. Everything about that was, it says humility. Ask the Lord for help. He refused to go out by himself. He did not know what to do, the Bible says. He was afraid. He didn't say, all right, well, come on, we got this. We going out and fight this. We going to go fight them back. Come on, let's go. We got a big army too. Let's go. Mm -mm. He said, I'm going to ask the Lord for help. We cannot do this on our own. And I'm going to bow myself down low. This brings me to my second testimony. Okay, y'all, there was this girl, right, in my neighborhood. I'm not going to say her name, you know, on YouTube. But um, I'm going to call her – what can I call her? <laughs> I'm going to call her Sue. Sue May. That wasn't her name, but. Sue May. So, Sue May did not like me, okay? I had not done anything to her. I promised, like, nothing. And she would chase me home from school. She would send her brothers after me. I'm riding my bike. Hey, they come chasing me for no reason. I'm like, what in the world? And I would be scared to death, you hear me? <laughs> I was Jehoshaphat, okay? I did not want to fight. I mean, and I had so many enemies, like girls, mostly girls, 
and some guys, but just for no reason. I'm telling y'all, I wouldn't bother anybody. All I want to do is play in my little dirt, ride my little bike, and I'm good, okay? I'm 100. Just let me play. And it's just like, nah, come on. Just want to attack me. I'm like, what in the world? You know? <laughs> just want to test me. And so... Uh, I would run every time her brothers would come after me. I would take off running and I would just be crying like, why are they bothering me? And um, so this one particular day, I was walking down the street with another friend of mine. And I saw Sue May over there with talking to some other people. And she came after me. She, she, she came for me, y'all. She just came up in my face, and she hit me. Now, don't judge me. <laughs> but I didn't hit her back because I truly, genuinely did not want to fight. I, I, I did not want to fight her. And my friend was looking at me like, girl, you just let her hit you like that? So... She kind of walked up ahead, and then I was just kind of like upset, and I just kept walking. And Sue May kept talking, 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 but I just kept walking. And I made a decision after that that every night I was going to get on my knees like my grandma. And I was going to pray for Sume because I had been hearing in Sunday school, pray for your enemies. Do good to them who despitefully use you. Pray for them. You know, love your enemies. Do the opposite of what they're doing to you. And it sunk in. And I said, I'm going to take this word practically and I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to pray like my grandma. I want to cry right now, y'all. I don't know what in the world. <laughs> Just bringing back memories. Oh, man. And I would pray for her. And I cannot remember, but it was a short period of time, maybe two months. Um, but I would do this every night and it didn't change right then she was still you know trying to come at me but let me tell y'all one day something broke in her I was in my backyard playing I don't know what I was playing some type of game I used to play by myself all the time because I was the only child for a minute until I had siblings. But I was in the backyard playing by myself. And all of a sudden, I see her two little sisters running across the street to come into my backyard where I was. And they didn't have no shoes on. They never wore shoes. And they just came and, Veronica, 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 Sue says she's sorry. Sue says she's sorry. And then she was behind them saying, shut up. I know how to talk going on so there was a fence in my backyard she came over to the fence and her sisters was just like little puppies and she said let me tell her she said Veronica I don't know why I didn't like you and I just wanted to let you know that I'm sorry I'm sorry for how I've been treating you and for everything I've done to you. Y'all, let me tell you something. She never bothered me again. I mean, I had no more problems out of Sue May, okay? That wasn't her name. I wish I could tell y'all her name. Because I came up with like a little song after that. Because we rode the same bus. 
and I would get on the bus, and we all had like little sunshine name tags on our on our uh, shirts, and her name was written on her name tag, and I used to get on the bus and say, Sunshine Sume, that wasn't her name, Sunshine Sume, and she would just look at me and be like, Y'all, I'm telling you that God will fight for you when you are humbled. And not only that, I used to, when I first got saved, well, I got saved at nine, but I backslid. And came back to God two or three, four or five times. <laughs> and he received me back every time, open arms, okay? Um, but there were times, you know, throughout my walk, I would get lazy and be like, you ain't got to get on your knees and pray. Um, but let me tell you something. It has never failed. Never has that method of warfare, because it is, it is a weapon of warfare. Never has it failed me. Never has it failed me to bow down my face to the ground and pray for somebody when I have been doing them good and they're repaying me for evil with evil and God not turn that situation around. My God. My God. <sighs> Though he is high and lofty and lifted up and highly exalted above the earth, King of kings, Lord of lords, beginning and the end, alpha and the omega, omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing, eternal, wise God. The Bible says he dwells with the lowly. Some people have forgotten their way. They still name the name of Christ. And they say, Lord, Lord. But not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God because they have forgotten the way of humility. They have forgotten that God is highly exalted, but he dwells, he fights for those who remain lowly. I give grace to the humble. I resist the proud. And the enemy has deceived them into thinking that God is with them. I'll never forget it's a movie um, about the story of David becoming king and Saul was after him and you know, was jealous of him and hated him without cause. David hadn't done anything to Saul, you know. God had just promoted him and anointed him. Uh, and Saul was afraid of that anointing. He was, a, he was intimidated by David's anointing. Um, and so he couldn't celebrate him. He wanted to kill him. And uh, Saul, in this movie that portrayed Saul, uh, he had went to the witch and tried to resurrect the prophet Samuel to give him a word and because Samuel had been his prophet. Um, Samuel was tired, okay? Samuel was tired of telling you, you, you doing this wrong. Come on, man, you know, you, you're rebelling against God. You're not being obedient. Obedience is better than sacrificing, and, you know? And uh, he cried over Saul and how Saul had failed from grace. 
And God told him, why are you crying? Get up. I have anointed David. I found a king. I found a man after mine own heart to be king. But Samuel told him when he tried to conjure him up from the dead, you know, why are you waking me up? You know, you and your sons, they, you're, you're going to die, okay, in battle. Because you came looking for me through wickedness, through witchcraft. So now I'm going to give you, it's going to be an evil report. And so the evil report was you, you're going to die by the sword. The same sword you've been after David with, without cause, is going to come for you. Because if you repay, because David has served Saul. Saul being tormented by evil spirits and David would come in and play his harp just so that he could get relief and then Saul would try to kill David in the same setting <laughs> he playing the evil spirit and then Saul throwing darts at him threw a javelin at him trying to kill him because he repaid David's honor David's um, good for evil the sword never departed from Saul's house even after he was gone and he got up that morning went out with the army and in this movie that I was trying to tell y'all about he came out and he said the Lord is with us after he was just told by the prophet that you're going to die today. You and your sons. Because you chose to repay good with evil. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I'm telling you, it is not worth it. Because even David wept at the fall of Saul. The Lord's anointed is who he called him. And, and, and even though Saul fell by the sword, he still hadn't died. And then one of the soldiers, his soldiers, are going to come over and finish him off. And when David found out that this soldier laid a hand on the king of Israel, the, laid a hand on the Lord's anointed. He said, were you not afraid to lay a hand to kill the Lord's anointed? And David killed that man. Because he said, hey, if you'll slay the king, you'll slay me, the new king. <laughs> I can't have you in my camp. My God, that was for somebody. <laughs> if you do it to him, you do it to me. David had integrity. And that's what the Lord is calling for. Us to have integrity, humility, no matter what they're doing. You keep the same heart posture. You ask the Lord for help. You bow down. No, you don't always have to get on your knees, but as I can tell you today as a witness that it has never failed me. Battles, some battles have brought me to my knees. And guess what? That's where we need to stay. That's where we need to remain. My pastor, Shannon Yvette, would say, hit the knee. Hit the knee. I believe, I would go on to say, that hitting the knee is the most drastic form of warfare, of weapon of warfare. It is a mass weapon. Because 
you're asking the Lord for help against an enemy or a situation or a thing that has come up against you that you had no fault in. Like you had no, it had no cause to come up against you. Now the Lord will step in and he will contend with those who are contending against you. Now you don't bow down to the situation or the circumstance. You bow down in God's presence and you bow down as his child in, in, in total surrender to his will. And the Lord says that when a man's ways, his heart, pleases him, that he will make, God will make, even your enemies be at peace with you. And that scripture walked in my backyard as a child. I saw it happen, y'all. That the Lord was pleased. That's what I live for. That's what I strive for, for the Lord to be pleased with me. Not everybody cares about that, but I want the Lord to be pleased with what I say, with what I do, with how I think. Repentance is something that is continual in my life. I want to please the Lord. And so I'm always checking my heart. I'm always saying what David said. Renew a right spirit within me, Lord. And give me a clean heart. And I've been on my face. I've been on my face. Ever since he showed me my grandma, it's just been like an intentional thing. And I'm more aware of his presence. Because he's always present. But we're not always aware. We're not always in tune. Because we carry as Christians, as, you know, um, kingdom-minded people, we carry the presence of God, right? But we're not always aware of his presence in us. We're not always tapping into the spirit of God, and what, but we need to be. And God is just calling for us To bow down. Bow down before the king. Hit the knee. <laughs> my God, my God, my God. And watch God fight your battles. Amen. That's it, y'all. Like, The battle is not yours, it is the Lord's. That means you're not the one contending here. You're not the one in the ring, sticking and moving. But he, he's doing it. And he's never lost a battle. You heard? He has never lost a battle. What's contending in that ring is your cry for help. Is your humility, your trust in the Lord. And your right standing with him. Jehoshaphat said, We did not destroy them when we could have. Same thing with David and Saul. David had many chances to destroy Saul. He chose not to. You got a decision to make to let the Lord intervene. He ain't going to just barge in, kick the door down and say, what's up? You have to allow him. 
to fight for you. Amen. And when you do, mm, you're going to see him turn that thing around. You've seen it. We've seen it for Esther. We've seen it for David. We've seen it for Joseph. We've seen it for Moses. We've seen it. I mean, I could just go on and on and on, right? But ultimately, y'all know who I love, Jesus. <laughs> like every video, I'm talking about Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Ultimately, Jesus is our greatest example by intentionally choosing to stay on a rugged cross for us. While they cast him down, he was being exalted. Humility comes before honor. How shall a seed come up if it does not die first? Whew, Jesus. That's heavy. How shall a seed Come forth, break forth, spring forth, except it fall into the ground and die first. Except it bow down. The Bible says, what is it that to say that he ascended, but first he descended into the lower parts of the earth? Because see, when Christ died, he went down. He went to hell, got the keys from Satan, preached a revival in hell, <laughs> took the keys, conquered hell. Conquered the grave. Conquered death. Come on. Then he ascended. He didn't just say, well, going on up. He finished the work. That's why it says the finished work of Jesus. He finished it by going down. My God, my God, my God, my God. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm on a cloud. <laughs> cloud nine. I beseech you to try that. To go to your knees. I know it may seem old fashioned. But I can tell you about an old lady who passed away at 99 years old. Still in her right mind. Y'all. She remembered that I was... That I didn't get full off a hamburger from Hardee's. When I was a little baby, something, something. I had done forgot. And she remembered better than I did. Okay? God kept her. He preserved her. He made our enemies our footstool. He restored her. He, I mean, she finished well. Walked out her purpose, her calling into her last days. Still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I mean a fiery preacher she was. I sat on that bed y'all the other day and I, I wept thinking about her and thanking God for her example and thanking God for the impartation. This woman had laid hands on me so many times, prayed for me, and I know I carry those gifts.
And I'm so grateful unto God. Mm. Y'all, this was like one of the Saturday sessions. It's 50 minutes. <laughs> oh, man. But I, I knew this was going to be heartfelt. I knew um, that I was going to go a little deeper. And that's okay. That's okay. Um, go down so the Lord can lift you up. Don't fight it standing up. Mm -mm. Bow down. Bow before the king. Bow before him. And I just feel led to pray here. Father God, I thank you for your word that is a light unto my path, lamp unto my feet. I thank you for the listeners here today uh, that are battling something right now, God. I thank you um, that they're in this position to see you move, to see you move mountains, to see you, God, Show yourself strong and show yourself mighty before them. And I thank you right now that you are going to show up and show out in these next, I want to say, seven days. God, of bowing before you, coming before you in meekness and lowliness. God, looking to you for help. I pray you step in. I pray, God, that you would get the glory out of every circumstance and situation here in the name of Jesus, who is our greatest example. I thank you. We bless you. And we say, amen. Amen. I'm going to go. I'm like basking over here. <laughs> Love you guys. Have a good night.